Well, hey gang, here's a little check-in on Aegean Strike. Uh, we're playing the Turkish missile crisis uh, scenario, and you know, there's no doubt that I am probably making mistakes here and there with the with the game, but we're um, we're continuing to uh, play and persevere regardless. So let's give a little recap of the situation and kind of my my understanding of, of how we get into an actual military situation here. Uh, the net of it is there's three there's three conditions to initiate the war. Otherwise, you're in what would be known as the pre-war or political phase. And so uh, the straits have to be closed twice or there has to be an attack conducted by Soviet forces against uh, NATO forces or Turkish forces. And we have to... Uh, and they're basically the two basic uh, scenarios. So <clears throat> in the... In the game, you roll to see how many naval units are activated per turn. And that's a D10 divided by two, rounded down. And so my thinking, my game plan here for the Soviets, whose goal is to capture uh, Ankara, or Ankara and the uh, Istanbul Turkish Straits here, they have to capture all these uh, little, let me move the camera over so you can see a little bit. We might as well zoom in. We got the zoom. Let's use it, right? All the uh, hexes inside the white, the white triangles have to be captured, controlled, meaning you've got to disable all of these, uh, or control all of these hexes, and in all these hexes there are, you know, weapons and things that have barrage ratings and stuff like that. And there's three more hexes up here around Istanbul. So my, my thinking was, well, the first thing we should do as the Soviets was to try and, during the naval movement of the forces that were available, were, it was to uh, move them down into these zones here so they're staged and ready to try and cause havoc in here around Istanbul or engage the naval, the, the submarines that are in these two hexes, which are currently mining uh, the Turkish Straits here, so that we could, you know, uh, kind of prepare the way and pave the way for an amphibious assault into Istanbul or near Istanbul uh, and or uh, further along the coast uh, so there's a, a route into Ankara. Uh, that's proved difficult to do because on the first turn uh, everything's in port so you've got to roll for the units that you wish to activate is my understanding and then that lets you have say I had four on the first turn uh, those four could activate but they can't really go anywhere because they're in port so they've got to wait to the end of the turn to be out of in port mode and that means next turn they're allowed to move and then you roll again for activation and this time I only got one unit so I was going to move you know one of these subs down this is one of the uh, missile capable naval uh, nuclear subs and uh, move one of those guys down then I was thinking well do I really want to move him by himself what if these guys uh, do something proactive against uh, the Russians so we're kind of waiting and in turn three I, I'm allowed to move two dudes so this time I'll be able to move two units and I'll be able to get them into uh, uh, one of these oper larger operational hexes. You can see these outlines here, they map over to a strategic map on the left hand side and the strategic map kind of continues further up here and takes us up to, to Sevastopol and Odessa and places like that. So I've got to move the naval units to within the sort of the fringe and then we transition in and then we go, we go from there. So that's because of sort of the Soviet plan. War hasn't broken out yet. And in the meantime, NATO has not been uh, sitting on its, on its haunches waiting for the attack to come. It's begun mining the, uh, mining the straits because it says you can mine uh, a straits hex in any turn. It doesn't say any war turn or political phase, it just says any turn. So we're kicking that bad boy off and we've got... Uh, this has got, this zone is represented over here by this marker with two ones. There's two mines there and there's two mines there. And that's going to affect movement for any units going through the streets. 
So in the meantime, I've uh, when it's been my non-initiative player or reaction player turn, I think that comes in the third action phase. Uh, the, the third movement phase allows the uh, non-initiative player to basically have his movement. And so I've been adjusting some forces, putting some zones of control around these various areas and we'll probably next turn probably pop these guys into sort of a defense a defensive mode the dog just walked into the house thank you very much left the door open and uh we'll we'll kind of get going here over here bulgaria is is neutral and i haven't even clipped these guys yet because i don't see how they can potentially get into the war unless the greeks attack them or the turks attack them and there's no need for them to do that so we want to keep all of those forces neutral and really make it just about the Soviets trying to get their, their game together. And I think one of the ways that they can get into the battle is through some sort of random event, right? So we'll see if that happens. Uh, same for the Greeks. You know, the Greeks may end up being completely neutral in this, or they may join sides. We'll see. Once again, for the Soviets, they don't want to attack Greece because they don't want to release all of these forces. There's a whole bunch of uh, Greek units here that could bog up the works and come and support the Turks. So while the Soviets can move through Bulgaria and use the ground movement, air and naval movement in and around there and stay and use their airfields, I think even, uh, we don't want to have any combat uh, reaching into this area. So that's kind of the general picture. We're starting turn three. The Soviets uh, picked up two uh, uh, two naval units they can move so we're going to move those guys we've got a roll actually there's a roll for the see and then it's the time for the uh the allies get to nato gets to move one <laughs> so i got to choose between uh it costs movement points to deploy mine so i'm only going to be able to deploy one mine this turn and we're probably going to put it here in this zone down here with the brits uh, I'm writing this up and looking up all the historical names of the different subs and things where I can. The Turkish stuff is almost impossible to find, but uh, we, we've got the name of this guy and I can't remember now. It's Resolute or something like that, or Swift and Bold or something. And so we're gonna, we're gonna you know, uh, deploy some uh, mines there. We can only deploy one per turn. And uh, that has left us with this massive uh, aircraft carrier group in Naples, all the way on the left-hand side of the strategic map sort of pining for the fjords, if you will, uh, waiting to maneuver into position. Now, clearly we don't want to get uh, out to sea and spotted too quickly and then be bombed out of existence. So uh, we've, got to, we've got to time our movement and our, our entry into the war pretty carefully. Uh, I'm thinking one of the keys is keeping uh, military units around this zone here keeping them all in supply, mining their dickens out of this, and then looking for opportunities to intercept uh, any air strikes that come from the Russians. Uh, and I've got my air force uh, up here, the Turkish air force set up mainly to be doing interception. And we'll see if that is indeed a viable strategy. So lots and lots of moving pieces in this uh, game. Uh, we can talk about the sequence of players some other time, but it, it basically each turn is broken down into three stages where there's a movement and reaction, and then a combat, a reaction, uh, air, and then an initiative air, and then an assault segment, and you do that three times, and the third time it's for the non-initiative player. It's basically how the game works. It's not as complicated as you might think. It's just there's a lot of little stuff you've got to keep track of, uh, which can get a little bit nitpicky sort of when things happen so you go to do something and realize oh well that happens in the end stage of the game turn not now so you're going to make a note to remember to do that because you've got a couple of hundred counters floating around that you want to be able to do things with all right just thought i'd check in with you on this so we're, we're into turn three in the pre-war game it's a 20 turn war turns 20 war turns and then it's over. So there's quite a bit of time here, but we, the Soviets almost don't want this to start yet until they can get these uh, subs into the, into the game, and ideally some of their naval forces into the game before we start uh, getting inundated with uh, airstrikes and all that sort of fun stuff and, and military actions. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Ciao.